How's the weather, folks? I know for me, nice days have become quite rare. When it comes to the heat, how many can tell that this has been another record-breaking year? And you don't even have to go look that up. You could feel it. The hurricanes are back. Florence is on its way to the East Coast, heading for the Carolinas, and due to hit land in a few days, as there is another storm right behind it. Plus, there is a monster brewing out in the Pacific, with forecast wind speeds of around 180 miles per hour, set to hit China around the same time as Florence. Keep in mind this is just a forecast from a model, and it is a bit too early to tell what the other storms out there are going to do. If you are using a model such as Ventusky, you want to also check the Canadian model and the US Navy's model as well, as they are quite accurate within two or three days. And it is better to prepare for the worst since we just went through this last year. We've had numerous volcanic eruptions this year. Sinkholes are continuing to open up in random areas around the world. Terrible flooding and crazy wildfires. Now these earth changes are affecting us in several ways. Number one, it's affecting our vegetation and crops. Those of you who are gardeners or farmers understand how these extreme conditions can affect vegetation and yield. But not only are these changes affecting our vegetation, they are affecting our wildlife as well. And among that wildlife, there is a class of animal that can become a serious problem to which there is very little one can do about it. They are on the move, and in certain areas, they have been swarming invasively. So dread them, run from them, the pests still arrive. So we've heard the stories of locusts, most commonly in the books of Exodus and Revelation. In the Exodus, they destroy everything green, including any fruit. In Revelation, they don't touch the vegetation, only the men without the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, whether you believe in the Bible or not, doesn't really matter because locusts are real. Although they are not likely to bite or eat humans alive, they are flesh eaters and they are extremely destructive. Those of you who reside or have spent some time on the northeast of the United States may have at one time or another ran into this little guy, the cicada. This is an insect with a 17 year life cycle, starting underground and ending in the air towards the end of the cycle. Billions of them everywhere. We're talking about one and a half million per acre of land. For those of you who don't know what that is like, I have lived in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area in various years of my life, and I have experienced their emergence several times. And for about two weeks, you have to deal with the sound of dead insects crunching beneath your feet. They're on the sidewalks, in the streets, they're all over the cars, on roofs of houses, everywhere. They primarily hang out in the trees where they make this ominous buzzing noise that will drive you insane. However, these cicada are relatively harmless as they only eat the sap of the trees, struggle to find a mate, lay eggs, and die. Then the cycle starts again. Now just because they have a 17 year life cycle does not mean they only appear every 17 years as I have experienced this at least four times and I am not 70 years old. The reason being, there are many different broods of cicada in various areas around the US with varying life cycles and not just in the northeast of the US, but other locations around the world, such as Australia. Those of you who have seen these things up close know that these are not your typical small little flying insects. No, these things are big, juicy, and crunchy. 
Try bicycling when these things are around as they smack you in the face while you cruise along the road. Needless to say, they are something you are very happy to see go away for a number of years. I bring this up because this is just one example of how certain species of bug or insect can remain dormant underground for several years until the conditions are just right. So recently, there has been an invasion of flying insects in Tongarog, Russia. These are chironomids, non-biting lake flies or midges that have been swarming the area for the past few years after heavy rainfall. And according to a government press release, their swarming in high numbers is linked to their migration season. The stink bug has been invading homes in India and the U.S. in states such as Illinois and Michigan in record numbers. They emit a very foul odor when squeezed or killed. They are known to be harmless, but some people would disagree. They do bite, and we have been bitten, and they stink horrible, and they're coming in the house. Around Lake Erie, we have the recent mayfly invasion, another relatively harmless but annoying bug. But their swarms are more common, especially in the Midwest around the Mississippi. Now in Turkana, Kenya, the residents there are in danger of facing famine due to the recent invasion of locusts. They swept through and devoured almost everything in their path. Many farmers lost a great deal of crops due to these insects and flooding. And let's keep in mind that southern Russia has also received their fair share of locusts this year. If you're already creeped out and itchy, it just gets worse from here. Not only are the commonly known insects and bugs a problem, but there are exotic species beginning to pop up, such as the toe-biting water bug in the Santa Monica Mountains, called the abidus. These things grow up to four inches long and have a nasty bite. The males carry the eggs on their back. These are flesh eaters that feed on snakes, turtles, fish, and they are highly aggressive predators as they will go for animals 50 times their size with a sharp poisonous beak that injects a toxin that will liquefy the flesh from the inside. They have been mostly spotted in the mountains and along streams. So in Oye County, Idaho, they have been having a problem with Mormon crickets this year. What's strange about this is they've only been seen once in the past 100 years and that was seven years ago. Although these giant crickets are an unpleasant sight to behold, they are quite harmless. By the way, North Texas and Peru have also been dealing with an overabundance of crickets due to heavy rain and heat. See, the problem with crickets is they can really stink up the place. Speaking of Peru, how many of you have heard of the recent insect invasion in a church in Peru? where what seems to be termites emerging out of nowhere like a plague. Maybe you've heard of the new exotic East Asian longhorn tick that invaded the U.S. this summer, primarily in North Carolina, which are suspected to have come from New Jersey and have been spotted in Arkansas and Virginia. The common tick would be the black-legged tick. Now, ticks cause Lyme disease and about 50% of ticks carry the infection. If you think you've been bitten by one, keep in mind that a tick usually needs to be attached to the host for at least 24 hours before transmitting Lyme disease. But don't wait around for symptoms. Get treatment as soon as possible. I'm sure the East Asian ticks, which are described as being twice the size of your average tick and aggressive biters, are probably all over the East Coast at this point. And that is one of the problems with having a large population of deer in residential areas, as deer almost always carry ticks. Pakistan has been having problems with the Chudvel insect, a type of millipede, to which the locals say the government has done nothing to solve the issue. We have invasive ankle-biting mosquitoes infesting Southern California, Speaking of California, how many of you know what a bark beetle is? Well, 
These things burrow and feed off the forest trees that have been weakened due to drought, killing the trees, in effect turning the trees into great kindling for wildfires. Pennsylvania residents are getting fed up with their growing spotted lanternfly population. Although they are not known to bite humans, they are a nuisance. They destroy crops, they love grapes, and they are not easy to get rid of. For one, birds don't like to eat them and they seem to have no natural predators at this point. The best thing they can do is stop their population from spreading as they tend to spread by cars that have been parked under trees and unproperly treated yard waste that is transported. Now, the UK has got it bad. First of all, they have a growing infestation of electric ants. No, they don't give off electricity, but they are attracted to it. Chewing through high voltage power lines, causing blackouts and fires. You see, they've been discovering nests. They have an invasion of white caterpillars in the oak trees. And the problem with these things are they have many fine white hairs that can cause allergic reactions. And even worse, they can shed these hairs, which can remain active for about five years. The UK has Asian hornets, which are huge. The average is about two inches. They have bed bug problems, spider problems the false widow my god they have Asian tiger mosquitoes putting them on a high disease alert these tiger mosquitoes can spread West Nile yellow fever dengue fever encephalitis they've got it all baby and it's a never-ending story for the UK all these invasions are happenings within this year and there were a lot more that I did not discuss for some of you this may seem to be hyped up to be more than what it is. Well, ask the residents who live in the middle of these invasions how they feel about that. Ask a few of the farmers. Because yes, swarming is a normal thing, but just in the past few years, it has proliferated to the point of intolerability. Not just on us, but on the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, what we are dealing with here are the beginnings of a great worldwide plague of insects and bugs as well as the microorganisms they carry. These creatures are destroying crops all over. And when they're not destroying crops, they're getting people sick. And when they're not getting people sick, they're making a mess, which is getting people sick. And yes, some people die as a result of all of this. And no, that's not Jim Sterling, that's the plague doctor of the 17th century. If you haven't looked into the bubonic plague, or Black Death, that started with fleas. It is the heat. It is the increase in moisture in the atmosphere. It is the heavy rainfall and flooding. And it is the earth heating up from the inside forcing these creatures and other new exotic species to the surface. Not just from volcanism, but from coal burning underground. Something else to look into. It would be good practice to start to prepare for future bug and insect invasions, especially when things start to cool down and these critters want to be inside. And your goal is to kill them. You need to pull a John Wick anytime you see one. Just leave the honeybees alone. You also want to find natural methods of killing and repelling invasive species as you don't want to go around spraying raid all over the place. You want to kill the bugs not yourself. Also, if you see a bug or insect that is listed as an invasive species, don't be afraid to report it. And make sure that the bottom of your foot is the last thing that bug sees. Just make sure you clean your shoes off as you can carry eggs around with you. I know all of this stuff sounds creepy and scary, but you need to know about this. This isn't about some cryptid monsters. Bugs and insects are real, and some of them will blow your mind as to what they can do. They should not be underestimated or overlooked, especially now with the weather we've been having. It is just a growing issue that nobody is talking about as much as they should be. It's important to know about these things so that if you ever have to deal with them, and you probably will more often in the coming years, 
with a little research, you will know how to deal with them. So, now that I feel like I have bugs crawling all over me, I'll end the video there. Take care.